This is Card Games TV One, Episode Nine. Um, free negates. So, basically, this is just something I was just thinking about right now. But I've been thinking about this for a while. But then I started going on a small little rant in my mind. And I'm like, why don't I obviously record this? Uh, it's a podcast. It's been a while. So. It's somewhat of a rant, but at the same time, it's something important because it is something we're seeing in the game. It does affect how you play the game, so it's very important. So, for those who care, here it is. Alright, so free negates. These are negates that you can play for free. Um, for example, Baby, uh, Baby Hatchy Act being one of them. You know, all you have to do is pitch a card, and you can play for free without paying its energy cost, right? So, the fact that you can play stuff without... Um, pain energy um, that's what makes it free right that's that's why we call it free some people you know would uh, argue that it's not free per se because you're either discarding a car for an effect or you're taking a life or something like that is like well it's free because of the alternative the alternative cost makes it free in um, because you're not giving up anything per se you know, um, energy-wise, the main thing is you're not paying, so that's what ultimately makes it free. It makes it where you don't have to worry about uh, saving your energy, you know, which is currency in this game, right? Um, you can spend it on whatever you want and still be able to play something defensive. Now we have Spark and the Gaze, like these cards came out in set 5. Um, <clears throat> You know, classic ones. Ones that are still being used is uh, Dimension Magic and, um, uh, let's see, the green one, which is Shocking Death Ball. Yeah. So these are the ones that are typically still being used. Uh, Time Magic and After Image sometimes get used, uh, but very sparingly, especially After Image. It tends to be the weakest of the four, so. Well, there's that, and obviously I bet made a bad decision playing that card when I went to that tournament. It was better negates I could have used, but anyway. But now we have better negates, right? Now we have, and I'm still waiting for them to come in the mail. I ordered them like last week, so they should be coming in this week. And um, <clears throat> really good cards. The fact that they could be played, like I said, for free, right? And they. Um, Play a token, and the token has blocker, which is amazing if you're using it. Not so amazing if you're going up against it, um, because of the obvious inherent problem you'll have with the fact that it's already going to be hard to go for a game because of the ability for your opponent to uh, out combo. You know, super combos is a thing. Um, you know, large hand size. Um, uh, you know, effects, like, uh, we got blockers, you know, we got the negates, right? Uh, we got, we even got blockers that, after you attack with them, right? So that means you can still attack, right? Which is, a, you know, a thing. St attack, but still be able to defend, right? Uh, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, obviously. <laughs> what I'm saying is, is that that is a thing. The fact that your opponent can attack and block with the same card. So, that means it makes it harder to win through attacks. So, especially when you're trying to go for game, right? It makes it harder. And then you throw in the floodgates and, and free negates like the sparking negates. And now the new testing opposition, chills army reinforcements, homicidal clones, and freezes army reinforcements. So, there's... Those are the, the four negates that when you have five or less life, you can take a card from your life at its hand in order to play these cards for free. And they're not once per turn. You can play them. You can play multiple copies. I had a little scenario in my head that I would, that's where I started going to the little rants before I made this video, which was the idea that if I was playing, you know, my Zamasu leader deck, I'm already going to be at a position where, you know, I already have more than more life because, you know, I'm set to Zamasu, and you know, when he awakens, 
you convert from your life to your deck, right? Where your opponent has to deck you out instead of dealing you damage to, um, you know, to um, to your life. So you definitely will be end up in a situation where you'll be at two life. That tends to happen, and you can be in a situation where, so even without it that being that leader, let's just say in general, just in general. You have, you're playing blue, you have Dimension Magic, you have two Chills Army Reinforcement, which is the blue negate, um, free negate, right? So you have two copies of Chills Army Reinforcement, uh, Dimension Magic, you have one energy, you know, one blue energy, right? And you have two life. So what you can do there is, uh, when your point attacks, tap the one blue energy, play the Dimension Magic to negate the attack, and untap two energy. Now you should have two blue energy, because you need two specific blue to play Chill's Army Reinforcement, right? So then your opponent attacks their second time, you know, their second attack for the turn. You play Chill's Army Reinforcement by paying two blue, negate an attack, and now you make a token. And the token gets a blocker, and the token is 10k, so that can actually be relevant in certain situations. Um, so then you, you just stop two attacks, and now you have a blocker for a possible third attack. Let's say your opponent does attack. Well, you block. Now you stop the third attack. So you already stopped three attacks off of um, one energy, right? Off of one energy, two cards. You already stop. You already stop three attacks. Then let's say your opponent's like, ah, oh, now you're tapped out. You only have two life. I overwhelm, or I, or they have, or they just so happen to have another attack. Maybe they're going for the leader swing or something. And they swing with it, right? So then you'd be like, all right. Well, for free, right, take a life, add it to my hand, since I have two life, I could afford one, and play um, my second copy of Chill's Army's Reinforcement. Negating that attack, so right there I negated the fourth attack for the turn, and I now make another token, which is a blocker. Which, if my opponent overwhelms and swings, right, I can stop that attack. So, I'm for one energy, one life, and three cards in my hands... I can stop five attacks. I can essentially survive a whole turn. Because on average, the, the minimum amount of attacks your opponent would have on average would be Leader Swing, Unison Swing, and at least one Battle Card Swing, right? <clears throat> so, the fact that you can stop five attacks with one energy, one life, and three cards, you know, that definitely going to make it hard for your opponent to win. And you only have two life, so... Your opponent is trying to swing with five battle cards, all right? Five attacks, right? Leader, unison, and at least three battle cards, right? You only have one energy, two life, a couple cards in hands, but you were able to stop all five of their attacks. You know, <clears throat> and again, these cards, one, they're common, by the way, if you don't know. These cards are common, so we all going to have access to these. Whether you use them or not, you're going to have them anyway. Just in case you decide you want to use them. Uh, they do work specifically for monocolor leaders, but <laughs> most people are playing monocolor leaders anyway, so that's not a problem. And again, like I said, these are free negates. These, to me, when I saw them, I'm like, oh, okay. They're like baby hat chair, but extra cards. <laughs> Essentially, right? Because they can stop at least two attacks, which is, you know, good enough in certain certain situations. And the fact that if you have multiple copies of them, you can, like I said, stop multiple attacks, which largely increases your chance of getting an extra turn, which is no different from playing a Baby Hatchy Act. Baby Hatchy Act is, isn't cheap, obviously, for a reason. But now we got common cards that give us pseudo Baby Hatchy Act-like effects. I imagine if you have Baby Hatchy Act plus you have these cards, right? You're just, you're just getting extra turns after turns after turns, right? You're just barely increasing your, your chances of getting extra turns. And we all know extra turns means extra attacks, which means extra chance of winning. Which, since your goal is to win, you know, not a problem, right? You want that. But, it does hurt the game in the sense that the idea of one of the, one of the aspects of the game is... The ability to have a back and forth battle with your opponent, where you're trying to get the upper hand on your opponent, you're trying to outplay your opponent, and it's very counter um, 
intuitive to that idea. You know, it's against the game concept where we have floodgate negates, right? We have violent rays, flying nimbus, and um, uh, dormant potential. And we have battle cards like Topo and and Baby's and Gohan Baby's Minion and so forth like that. Like we're getting more, more and more cards that make it where our opponent can't attack. I mean, think about it, especially in blue. Look, look, look at the, look at the fact that blue has Baby, Baby Hatchiac. They have Chills Army reinforcement now, right? Which can can at least stop two attacks just by one copy. Then you got uh. Then, of course, you know, the Metro Magic <laughs> kind of pretty much works in a similar way, but that's for a different conversation, right? Um, but then you got uh, Baby's Minion. You have Vegeta's Ready to Rumble. You know, Gohan Baby's Minion and Vegeta's Ready to Rumble. They're right there. I already mentioned four cards that are mono blue that are really good cards to put in blue decks that already have the ability to floodgate, right? The ability to get you make it hard for your opponent to attack multiple times in a turn, that'll give you an extra turn. Which is why it's still weird that some people say that blue is very weak against, you know, red aggro, but it's like, that makes no sense. Blue has a lot of fl blue, you know, floodgates, plus there's some generic floodgates cards you can use. You know, it wouldn't be that hard to splash in red into a blue deck and bang, there you got Topo. You got Topo on top of all your, your Gohans and your Vegetas and, you know, your it shows army reinforcement, your baby hatch, and so on and so forth. So it's like so many cards you can just play one card, and for the rest of the turn, your opponent your opponent can't really attack um, without there being a cost, right? And then on top of that, you already people are already playing floodgates, right? So you're already playing floodgates, so you're already playing stuff like Black Mass Sane, and then have these cards. So it's already making it hard for your opponent to play the game by playing Black Mass Sane, for example, and then you got these free negates. Making it hard for them to <clears throat> be able to do you damage. Not as a control player and as a player in general who, you know, love these types of cards. Of course you'll be a fan. Of course you'll you'll be like, you know, anything that makes a that makes the game way harder for my opponents even better. Um, it's great. And it's like, I understand. You know, I agree that you should always make the game harder for your opponent and easier for yourself. But that's more of a, you know, a concept of making sure that the cards you choose to play do make the game easier for you to play so you don't have to do too much thinking but at the same time you know you you, you don't want to make the game because you don't want to make the game too easy for your opponent you don't want to make it easy for them to attack you you don't want to make it easy for them to do you a lot of damage or or to even stop your attacks but at the same time bandai has been making a habit lately of adding a lot of um defensive cards there's way more cards that can stop attacks than cards that can make attacks, right? And which is part of why I've been promoting the idea of like, you know, more dual attackers, you know, putting more dual attackers into decks because we have, you know, these types of cards that, you know, especially low cost, you know, for one energy you can stop an attack, a powerful attack at that, right? If I drop a 5 drop 30k triple strike and swing with it, and you just for one energy stop my attack, or for no energy stop my attack, or just block with a blocker. It's like, well, you got that. <laughs> I spent a lot of time and effort getting this one strong card out there to try to deal three damage, and you were able to stop it for one, one energy, one or less. I should say one or less, right? So that's where the whole free negates, you know, start adding to the problem of how it's getting easier to defend when it should be a a, a decision. Where you either put up an attacker, you play something to attack your opponent with, and you know run the risk of them attacking you back, and you have no defense because you chose to attack and left and, and you know left yourself defenseless. You had to choose between attack or defense, right? One or the one or the other. Now with you know free negates and stuff like that, it's making it where you don't have to choose between one or the other. You can do whatever you want. You can do both. And that's starting to feel like Yu-Gi-Oh. See, so the magic, for example, you have to choose between playing something or playing a counterplay. You know, in here we have counterplay, right? Well, over there, you know, in magic we call it counterspell, but you get my point. It's like here we got counterplays. We got cards that we can play 
to counter our opponent, you know, to stop our opponent from playing something, but we get something out of it. We get a battle card. And that's busted. <laughs> that's, that's, you know, in Magic, we have counter spells where it stops something. Like, oh, you're trying to play a uh, creature, right? Essentially a battle card. Well, I'll play this, you know, extra card, as it were, right? This instant and counter it. And that's it. One for one. I'm giving up a resource, which was the counter spell, to stop you from playing your um, creature, your battle card, right? Which is a resource. The weird thing is, in Dragon Ball Super, I stop you from playing a battle card by playing a battle card. So I play a battle card on your turn, stop you from playing one, and I get one. So I get to establish a board while stopping you from establishing a board. Does that sound fair? No. Does that sound epic and awesome? Yes. <laughs> right? And, the, and these are reasons why um, some people would disagree with, you know, this, some of the stuff I'm saying. Disagree with the idea of like, oh no, that's good that we can, you can counter something and play something, you know, make, and still be able to make a play. It's like, well yeah, because you're the type of person that likes to have your cake and eat it too. You know, you like to still have your cake so you can admire it and be like, oh my god, this cake looks amazing. But still be able to eat it because you're hungry, right? But still be able to look at it like, oh my god, this cake just looks so amazing. Let me put it on the shelf, but still be able to eat it because you're hungry, right? <laughs> like, you can't do both, right? <laughs> you can't, you know, hold on to a, you know, a beautiful looking cake, but still be able to eat it when you're hungry. You have to do one or the other. You either get, you keep the cake and admire it, or you eat it. And more likely, you're going to eat it because it makes more sense to eat it. You know, if you want to admire it, why not take a picture of it? But at least, it's not the same as keeping the cake, but hey, close enough, right? The point is, is that too many people want their cake and eat it too, right? They, they want they want both. They want the ability to uh, stop their opponent from playing the game, but at the same time, play the game themselves. And that's definitely something very popular in Yu-Gi-Oh! Which, you know, makes the game a little very toxic um, as a... As, uh, you know, as, as a game where you are benefiting from making it hard for your opponent to play a game. Like, you'll put something up on board, it stops your opponent from playing the game, and, you know, not, you know, nothing stopped you from playing the game, right? You got to play, and your opponent didn't. And it shouldn't be that way. You know, you should be able to go, you know, it should be, you know, back and forth. Um, I'm not saying that we shouldn't have, like, floodgates or, you know, certain cards that you, as once you play it, it gives you an advantage. Obviously, card games in general is all about advantages, just like in life. If you have the advantage over someone in something, you know you should benefit from that advantage, right? You know, if you if you have a, a if you have a faster car than your opponent, I mean, than somebody else, if you race that other person, you should win, right? Because your car is faster, right? That's the advantage you have that your car is faster. But the point I'm also trying to get to is not just like, oh my god, it's so hard to, to you know, um, attack and win the game through attacking. You know, that is a problem, but it's the fact that, you know, we need to keep in mind that that is what's going on. So we have to try to prepare for it. So I made a video about um, beating negates, literally a video talking about these negates, right, these cards that... And card, you know, floodgates in general. Just the idea is like there's cards you have to take to account because these cards make it way too easy for your opponent to survive a turn. You know, if you're looking at it from you know you as a player, like you playing your opponent, if your opponent has these types of cards, it makes it easier for them for them to survive. It makes it it makes it less skillful for them to defend than it is. You know, well, it just makes it less. It just makes it easier for them to defend, right? Makes it less skillful for them to defend. When it used to be skillful to defend, like you had to figure it out. That's why stuff like Wii's Cohesion was a really good card um, back in the day. Still is, but I'm just saying, like, it was a really good card because of the potential it had. The fact that, like, you play, untap your energy, and you, so that we can have the energy for potentially another the gate or something. And that was an interesting um, concept, right? But that's only useful if you actually had some, you know, extra copies. So the more copies you had of something, the, the the better your defense would be. But it wasn't always guaranteed to be, like, really awesome defense, right? It just, you had the potential to. So that was nice. But, 
again, you still had to make sure you had at least one energy on tap. Sometimes you don't have that option. Sometimes you have to tap out to make an unimportant play, especially if it's a board wipe. A lot of times you tap out because you're you're, you're playing a board wipe. And so then you have to choose between wiping the board, which already is defensive. You know, you wipe the board. That reduces how many attackers your opponent has next turn to attack you with, obviously. Um, but it's the fact you have to choose between... Um, board wiping now and, and your opponent potentially dropping a whole bunch of you know uh, more battle cards and swinging at you anyway it's like oh man that board wipe was kind of useless <laughs> in a way because um, my opponent still was able to uh, reestablish a board and attack me anyway so but it's better to try and fail than to have not tried at all right but then there's you know just the idea of thinking this like I should you know, try to find ways where I can clear my opponent's board with less energy, so that way I can still have some energy for defense. You know, that, that that's the kind of mindset you would have to have, um, you know, playing the game. But now you don't have to do it so much. Now you could just, I don't know, just tap out. Just tap out, play a board wipe, and don't have to worry about defense because I might have free negates. I'm good, <laughs> you know what I mean, and, and then sometimes there's some leaders, that's another thing, there's some leaders that also have um, built-in defense, built-in ways to make it hard for your opponent to win, right, because um, remember, the game starts off where both players have 8 life, and, they, and the goal is to deal 8 damage to um, your opponent in order for you to win, deal you know, 8 damage to your opponent for you to win, and prevent your opponent from dealing 8 damage um, so they they don't win, right? So those are the two things you gotta do: deal your opponent eight damage and prevent your opponent from dealing eight damage. Simple, you know, simple, you know, concept of the game, and that's the goal, and that's you know what most people should be focused on. Most other players I notice have a habit of focusing on other details, you know, but um, things that I consider not so important, like unisons and things of that nature, or certain battle cards. It's like it's not that important for you to try to beat every battle card your opponent plays. Sometimes just let them let them keep a battle card with double strike. As long as you have good defense and you can stop their um, double strike attacker, that double striker doesn't matter. Because as long as it doesn't, it can't deal you damage. It don't matter that it's on the field. It's only when it does do when it can deal you damage. That's when it's a problem, obviously. But you know, bad is making it easier and easier to stop attacks so so now you'll just be focusing on trying to take one or less one or one or zero damage per turn um, and that's why something like uh, these uh, free negates the fact that you could take a life which you're adding to your hand by the way take a life and stop an attack so you can stop a something that has quadruple strike something that has triple strike or double strike right or something that has crit, right? You'll play this, stop the attack, and bang, add a card to your hand so you so you didn't neg, you didn't lose hand advantage, right? You didn't lose a card. Like if you had five cards in your hands before the, the attack was declared, you're still gonna have five cards after the attack was declared. So that's the thing. These cards now if this these cards had the the the, the condition where you, the the card is sent to the drop instead of being added to your hand, then it would be a minus. Um, you know, minus from the hand, as well as, uh, you know, minus from, from your life as well. I mean, it's already a minus from your life, but at least it would be a minus from your hand as well. So that way you're giving up something, so. But, instead they're making it plus. They're making it where you're adding to your hand, so. Um, another thing is you can use these cards to self-awaken. That's another factor to them, because they say when you have five or less life, you can trigger this, uh, you can play these cards. For, for their permanent. Um, so if your opponent is deliberately trying to keep you at 5 life. So you can't awaken. Um, if they decide to attack one of your battle cards. Then it's like alright cool. Thanks for attacking my battle card. Or a unison. Especially if they're trying to go for a unison. That's the worst thing they could do. They just fell right into your trap right. It's like I attack your unison. It's like alright cool. I play this negate. Take a life. So now I'm at 4. Stop your attack. And now. You know. I'm at four, so I can awaken my leader, you know, when the time is right, right? So, 
damn if you do, damn if you don't, right? So there's, there's a there's a lot to take to account, you know. I mean, the the point is is that these are things you have to think about. It's just the whole point of this rant, as it were, is is just to think about that like these cards, you know, exist. I'm already I already proxy these, so I'm already testing them out, and you know, having some fun with them. Um, you know, doing test hands, of course. Um, I will be doing some untapped stuff soon. Definitely want to get to back to playing on an untapped. We'll do some recordings so that way at least I can share some dual, some gameplays. I do have people who are interested in seeing me in action, so I will do my best to provide them some entertaining content. Um, yeah, and so then you'll definitely see a lot of these cards, these negates in action, stuff like that. And you'll definitely see like what happens. Because this reminds me of when I was when I was at the tournament. And, you know, me and my opponent were topoing each other back and forth. Like, I topoed my opponent twice, he topoed me twice. So, four topos were played in one, you know, in one single, you know, um, um, game. You know, so that, that's a thing. So, it's just uh, the, the humor of, like, I play a topo, my opponent ends their turn. They, I, it's my turn, I try to swing, they play a topo, I end my turn. You know, and we just kept going back and forth that way. You know, I mean, it was fun, um, but it wasn't skillful, you know what I mean? Obviously, it was fun, you know, <laughs> the the little f fun back and forth we were having, you know, trying to, trying to, you know, because we were, you know, both obviously playing aggro, we both had wide, going wide strategies, so it was fun trying to get our going wide strategies to, 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 to put in some work, but, you know, we kept dropping topos on each other. Which obviously shows we were both prepared for going wide strategies, right? So it's, it's funny you see aggro decks play against each other because um, one they have the going wide strategy, so they have you know obviously the same game plan, but they also have the defense to going wide. But that's the thing you know I'm trying to make is the fact that a lot of these cards, especially these floodgate negates and these free negates and free floodgate negates, right? <laughs> That'd be a thing, right? Oh, my God. Um, you know, besides, um, um, what's it, a baby hatch act, is the fact that, you know, well, there's more, actually, yeah, there are battle, battle card negate, floodgate negates, obviously. Um, so, yeah, that is a thing. Um, so, it's, it's just the fact that it's, it's happening more and more. Like, what's nice about these, um, free negates is that at least they're not floodgate negates per se. They're free, but that's a problem, right? Free, because free is good, but it's, you know, that at the same time it's bad. You know, bad for the game. Good for, for for us players who like to use these cards, of course. Good for us to use. Bad for the game itself because it shouldn't be that easy to defend. It should requ require a, you know, a, a a planning, you know. Like putting a blocker on the field, or have, keeping cards in your hand so you can out combo attacks. You know, uh, you know, if you have one negate in your hand, use it to stop one very important attack. It shouldn't be like, oh, you attack with the leader, bang, melee negate, and for the rest of the turn you can't attack unless it's with one battle card or some shit. Like, damn, you flying Nimbus on the leader swing automatically. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that kind of stuff, and that becomes a problem. Or like, oh, the lead, your opponent attacks with the leader. Bang, topo, right? Or you attack with the leader and your opponent topo is you like, damn, shit. All right, well, I'm going to end my turn. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, it shouldn't be that easy to to get an extra turn. It should be, you know, back and forth. You know, turn one, it should be some form of back uh, back and forth. Or at least a setup, you know, turn one tends to be, you know, set up, like, turn. So you set, you, you know, you, you play something turn one just to set up for turn two, turn three, you know, the usual and you know, and most battles should be on turn three and four. Um, and if you can, you know, get to turn five, you get to turn five and six, you know, that kind of stuff. And that's when the game should really be, you know, you know, a game of wits and strategy, and hopefully you drew good and all this extra stuff, right? All these factors you have to take into that. But now, that's not the case. Now it's like, all right, well, I can put in a whole bunch of work, you know, effort and stuff. But if I 
end up adding, you know, dealing my opponent damage, right, and the cards get added to their hand, and now they got these free negates, and then I try to go for game, now they can play these negates for free, or for cheap, or whatever you want to call it, right, they're just like, bang, 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 just stopping me left and right, because one epic thing about testing the opposition that I love is combining it with Topo, for example, because I can play Topo, right, for two red energies, pitch a card, and play Topo, now if my opponent wants to take the topo challenge, right, and attack by pitching two cards from their hands, I can be like, alright, well, testing that position, right, because at that point, obviously, I should be tapped out if I only, you know, if I kept two energies for topo, so now I can play testing that position, negate the attack, add a card from my life to my hand, which could be another testing that position, duh, right, and I make a blocker, so if my opponent does try to uh, declare another attack, well, one, they have to give up two more cards, and then I'll just block with a blocker. So they'll end up losing four life. I mean, not four life. <laughs> I wish. Uh, four cards from their hands. Just trying to attack twice. Right? Just trying to attack twice. And that's after I negated an attack with Topo. So I'm able to stop three attacks for two energies. You see, you see what I'm getting at? Like how easier it's getting to stop attacks? When it shouldn't be that easy. It should be like, you know, you decide. It, it, there should be some decision making when it comes to, uh, you know, defending. It shouldn't just be like, oh, okay, you attack, stop all, stop that attack, and then the rest of the attacks for the rest of the turn. Like, damn, I got Overwhelm in here. And like, I had all this whole, I had this full thought out strategy of what I'm going to do to try to deal as, most, as much damage this turn. But you played one card and now I just can't do nothing. You know? That becomes a that creates a problem. <coughs> that 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 starts taking the skill out of the game, and well, not too surprising <laughs> that uh, Bandai is you know starting to cater to that strategy, catering to the concept of um, you know the no skills concept. You know, it's like you know it's. There's, there's money to be made in making things easy. You know, I'm against the idea, but hey, you know, it's not my company, right? Not my game. I just play it, enjoy it, and, you know, master it as best as I can within the, you know, <laughs> within the criteria of the game. But it is unfortunate that it's like, it's getting tougher and tougher to win through attacks when they're making it, you know, easier to, to negate that you don't even need to even worry about comboing, because now you can just, like, have a thick hand, you know, like, you can draw a whole bunch of cards, right, like, most people normally do play strategies where you're drawing a whole bunch of cards, um, and then get these free negates or cheap negates, right, and just stop and attack for, you know, a couple attacks for a turn, and then next turn, be like, alright, my turn, I attack, oh, you got nothing, I dump my whole hand into that attack or some shit like that, right, and it's just going to be a, a weird, annoying back and forth. It just creates this scenario where it's like, you know, everybody's going to play these, you know, and they'll have to play these. Instead of playing stuff that they would like to play, because normally you'll try to play stuff to be, uh, you know, unique and strategic and, you know, spices. Like, people like to say, you know, your tech cards, you know, things, this, you know, things that, you know, um, you saw value in and you make it work. Instead of that, it's like, oh, yeah, let's all play the same shit. Let's all play free negades, free battle cards, free, 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 free. It's like, oh, you mean Yu-Gi-Oh? Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's play Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> you know, and it gets to that point. And I, you know, am a Yu-Gi-Oh player myself, so clearly I see the similarities. Um, as a Yu-Gi-Oh player, I'm not against free, but at the same time, a game where it's supposed to be about, you know, paying for stuff and decision making. I like that aspect because it's it, it makes it challenging. It's too easy for me to just build a whole you know powerful deck that everything is free. You know what I mean? Uh, my whole my whole uh, thing since I started playing this game was trying to find as many cheap or free stuff I could possibly find that I can combine you know into a deck and. And be able to do what most other decks can't do unless they have the same, you know, it's the same build, the same strategy. And that's where, like, Bodyguard Ledger came in. It's like, oh, snap, a 15k 
battle card that's a blocker. You can play for free if you have no battle card and your opponent does. Essentially, Cyber Dragon, right? So it's like, okay, there's a free card. And they have some cards that have zero cost, like um, Flute and um, um, Zeno Button and stuff like that. So I'm like, oh yeah, I'm liking these cards. And there were some other cards that are similar that were free, or at least you could play them for free if you met the con you know, right conditions. Um, and I have a folder dedicated to, to that. To a, a folder dedicated to free cards, and I have a folder dedicated to burn cards. Cards that essentially will deal, my, you know, that deals damage to my opponent. So that way, I can um, do, you know, those two powerful things: play things for free and burn my opponent. Because burning is hard to interact with, and it bypasses um, um, negates blockers. Um, 30, 30 card hands, 60 card hands, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's exaggerated, but you get the point. It's like, you know, when it comes to attacking in general, just the most basic aspect of the game is attacking, especially attacking with like a leader or something, you know, it's easy for your opponents to block with a blocker or negate or out combo the, the leader swing, right? As an example, like, it's too easy with those three factors, technically four, um, to make it hard for you to, uh, attack with something to win, you know, end the game in your favor. Uh, the fourth thing would be uh, like a counter play or a battle or a card effect that can KO a battle card or at least make it um, or make it where the battle card can't attack or some shit like that, right? So, so you get the you get the idea. A lot of times it's hard to get multiple battle cards onto the field and but we found ways to get multiple battle cards on the field so that's a thing. So I can understand to a certain degree that Bandai is going to want to give us um, uh, anti-aggro cards per se, if you want to look at it that way. But the thing is, is that this inherently, uh, by default, already shuts down non-going wide strategies, non-aggro decks. You know, decks that just rely on one or two attacks per turn, and these types of cards make it easy to stop those types of attacks. So, you know, you don't have to worry about that much. Decks that go wide forces your opponent to have to be able to um, stop multiple attacks. They have to use, you know, um, combo, right? They have to use negates and they have to use blockers and skills of, of cards. And they have to, tr you know, think and plan and prepare themselves to try to outplay those types of strategies. But Bandai, of course, could try to create less um, free battle cards, for example, free play cards. So that way, you know, everything is still, you have to pay to play it. So then it's just more of like upgrading. Like, I've been using Dimension Magic for a long time. It's like, hmm, when will I stop playing Dimension Magic, right? When will I have the need or the desire to not play Dimension Magic in Blue Decks anymore, right? You know, I still play Dimension Magic. Unless I don't need a negate, <laughs> I'm pretty much just going to play Dimension Magic in, in blue. So, the thing is, it's rare for me to replace it with anything else. There's very few other blue negates that I would be interested in. I just automatically, oh, Dimension Magic, automatically. No hesitation. I don't even have to think about it twice. Just bang, Dimension Magic right off the bat. And since I'm being, you know, I, com uh, I combine the two with you know, together. So, you know, hopefully, um, I'm just pointing out the fact that I am a fan of these cards. I like these cards. The artwork's adorable, especially the testing opposition with the little baby Cybermans coming out of the ground. It's so adorable. So I'm definitely a fan. Definitely, <laughs> I'm definitely using that in my um, Gohan deck and Boma deck and other decks. So it's, these are, you know, even though I'm saying that these will create problems in the game because, you know, it makes it so, so, so much easier to, um, you know, survive a turn because one, you're negating attack and second, you're creating a blocker. So that's two defense off of one card. Um, that's just, and again, remember, free, essentially, that's just, that's just adding too much to the defensive aspect of the game that, 
You know, it's already hard enough to put up attackers. You might think it's not that hard, but it, it, it still is. It still is because you you know the the attackers you 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 pick have to meet certain criteria. They have to have certain attack power, so that way you either so you don't have to combo or or so you have to, or you still will combo. Um, then there's the the how much damage the battle card is gonna do, how much it costs to play the battle card, and um, you know, um, got still got still got to deal with stuff like blockers and stuff like that, and then. You want the card to do something, right? Usually, you you want the card to have an effect, other than just being a strong double strike battle card, right? You also want it to have a useful effect that could, you know, help you in um, certain matchups, like a board wipe effect or something. So you want those factors to be, you know, factored in. So that's the kind of stuff you look for when you're looking into a card, and you know something you gotta, you gotta take to account. It's like, you're gonna pick those types of cards, and they're gonna cost, you know, a certain cost, you know, to actually play it in the game, and sometimes if they're really good, they're gonna cost a lot of money, right, in real life. So they're gonna cost a lot in either, in either aspect. And, but the negates don't cost that much on average. You know, so... But we, it's I, I do like challenges, and this definitely makes the game more challenging because it's like uh, it's bad enough. I usually wait wait until my opponent's tapped out for me to to, to go for you know try to go for game because I you know and then of course try to get rid of the uh, blockers. So I have to wait until my opponent has no block no blockers. Wait until my opponent's tapped out. And then hopefully my opponent's hand size is smaller than mine's, or hopefully their even if their hand size is bigger than mine's, hopefully there's not enough combo power in that hand to stop me from going for a game, you know that kind of stuff. So sometimes you get into the luck factor, you know. There's there's you you you, you have to think more when you attack than when you block than when you defend. Defending is just a matter of like, okay, um, do I want to take the damage or not? No, I don't. And that's it. Simple decision. But when you're attacking, it's like, okay, um, I have a 20k double strike and my opponent has two life. And he just did, and right now he said no negates. So I really want to dump my whole hand into the attack and hopefully win. But again, notice I said hopefully win, not definitely win. But hopefully win. And then if I take the risk, I'll like, right, dump my whole hand into the attacks. Hopefully I win. And then they're like, they manage to out combo with just five five combo, right? Five five k over, you know, how much I put in. And it's like, ah oh, man, that extra five k did that you got. Good for you. You were able to out combo. And now lose, <laughs> right? You know that kind of situation, which sucks. Which is why I try to avoid. Um, comboing in general, like I rather my opponent um, combo defensively um, than um, than me combo defensively and or and offensively. I don't want to combo at all, you know. And that you know slightly leads to the whole me not playing super combos per se. Even though I do use super combos from time to time, I use them uh, multicolor ones mainly for their effects because you know their utility. <clears throat> so I tech them in, but I don't, you know, use them in general because I'm trying not to combo in the first place. So it just made no sense to even, you know. And it's not just that I don't want to combo, which is why I don't play super combos a lot. It's just that I got to the point where it's like I don't really use super combos a lot in the game. So it's just like, you know, I don't need to add them if I don't really use them that much or at all. A lot of times I charge them as energy, so it's better that I just don't waste deck space putting them in and just put other stuff instead that I would use more often. Um, and then I just got to the point where it's like, but I, uh, ultimately I would like to, to get to the point where I just don't have to combo. 
where everything I play, I can play and swing with it, and it does everything it needs to do. So if I play a battle card, I want it to be 30k, 40k, you know, with double, triple strike, you know, that kind of shit. Like, I'd rather have that than to play something that's 10k double strike or 15k double strike and then swing and then be like, alright, let me combo three cards from my hand just to make it 15k or play a super combo plus a 5k, right? To try to make it a 30k double strike and hopefully the attack goes through because my opponent hopefully can't out combo it. When I could just play a 30k with double strike or 40k with double strike. Like, I'd rather do that. I'd rather play stuff that's already strong with double strike than to make something strong with double strike, right? You know, if that makes sense. So, um, and that just makes the concept simple, right? The only reason you combo is because you want to get to that high attack power. The high attack power you see value in it, right? You know, because it's the idea uh, to make it harder for your opponent to out combo. But this is why I rather play strong battle cards, you know, with high attacks. And a lot of them, so that way I don't have to combo at all. I just swing, swing, swing with a whole bunch of strong battle cards and force my opponent to have to out combo them. I rather negate, which is where the testing oppositions, where these free negates come in, because them these cards can flat out negate an attack, and make a token, so I can block another attack, so I can I could just stop attack. I rather negate attacks than to um, try to out combo them. Um, but of course, I want to be in. Uh, but against my opponent, I want to force them to combo because I want them, their hands to get smaller and smaller when they do, so that way they have less cards to play back, play, play back against me. So uh, since I'm comboing less, that means anytime I do draw cards from draw effects, like my leader, uh, my leader, for example, those cards stay in my hand. I get to use them whenever I need them, especially if they're like, you know, battle cards, right? Um, I don't want to combo off a Super Saiyan, I mean, uh, yeah, Super Saiyan Blue, Kaioken, Goku, you know, when I rather keep it in my hand and pay three and, and play it as a board wipe um, when I need it. I don't want to combo it off for 5k just because I'm trying to prevent my opponent from dealing me one damage, right, um, towards my leader. So these are kind of the, th the things that I take into account, so I'm trying to combo less because it's just better that way um com comboing makes this game unique especially like you know in the magic sense um but also in the Yu-Gi-Oh sense um but i play card fight vanguard so i'm used to comboing and perfect guard and stuff like that um and perfect guards are essentially like negates so i prefer negates aka perfect guards over comboing because i don't want to give up good cards that i could play against my opponent just to stop them from you know, just to stop their leader swing or unison or battle card swing. So I'd rather not combo. So I'm trying to uh, remove comboing from the way I play. Um, other people are still going to combo. Other people are still going to you know, play super combos and do whatever they want. I don't care. I have no problem against it. That's that's fine. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not against it. It's part of the game, so be it. Let them do it. But I am, you know, trying to minimize certain aspects of the game make the game simpler um, you know for me to play and do the things I want to do because ultimately I'm just trying to deal my opponent 8 damage I'm not you know I'm not trying to have a back and forth battle with my opponent uh, when it comes to like you know comboing right um, I'd rather just try to swing as many attacks as I possibly can per turn land as many attacks as I can per turn and just you know, keep the game that simple for myself. But uh, just something, just something, food for thought. Just pointing out this thing about these negates. Um, keep an eye on them. Prepare for them. That's the main point of this whole thing. What's the idea of just pointing out this? Like this is something we we gotta take to account. They exist, just like there's other cards that exist, and we gotta we gotta take them to account. We have floodgates, and then now we have these. I'm already playing violent rays and testing the uh, testing the opposition in my red decks. You know, I'm already, you know, I'm still using, you know, since being Dimension Magic. Soon I will be trying to incorporate uh, Chills Army Reinforcement in that strategy. I am already playing homicidal, homicidal, homicidal clones with uh, dormant um, potential in green decks already. So. 
and Frieza's army reinforcements, I will be um, adding them into certain decks. I definitely am going to play Frieza's army and reinforcement in my Shinwan deck, so that's a thing. So, just point out the fact that these are cards that I'm definitely using. I already bought my playsets, just waiting for them to come in so I can start putting them into decks. And, you know, that's an important detail that they are here. Um, especially homicidal clones combined with um, what is it, a big, big, a big, a bigger more. So bigger more domain puts uh, domain potential unleash and homicidal clones will be like staple negates in green, right? So these are things you gotta take gotta take to account that these things will be available. Um, wouldn't be surprised if people try to like side deck these cards instead of main deck them I wouldn't be surprised that become a thing but um, to me definitely they're worth main decking but you never know we'll see how uh, uh, the community um, uses these cards but they're definitely going to be using these cards and that's the thing since it's they're going to be using these cards we gotta we gotta fight them we gotta fight these cards we gotta find ways to bypass them one way is playing cards that can attack more than once so leaders that can attack twice, unisons that can attack twice, battle cards that can attack twice, or three times is you know even better. Um, especially because the these free negates negate one attack, then create a blocker so that that can stop a second attack. So if you're trying to get an attack to go through, you need triple attack, so that way you can you know um, get past the first negate, the blocker token, and then get your third attack to try to go to the damage step. Unless they play another freaking uh, negate rate right, and stop your third attack. Like, ah, oh, that's the thing. And that'll be the end of this video. I mean, this uh, audio.